Hey guys, so I'm just sitting here at my desk enjoying this candle and concerned that it's going to set my room on fire because of the acoustic foam I just set up. And it turns out today has been a huge day in the world of Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns expansion stuff. Now, to be clear, this is primarily going to be a video about the Daredevil, as today, yes, was ArenaNet's first official reveal to us about how this specialization would work. And indeed, much of the data mining that came out yesterday and the day before is bang on. This is exactly exactly how the daredevil would function. It's not even a surprise to us, for example, the name is. There's plenty to talk about though, and it's a really cool elite specialization. I can say very confidently that of all the elite specs that have been revealed so far, Tempest is my least favorite. Wow, I never thought I'd be saying that. I'm not the biggest thief fan, but I think what they did with this elite specialization in terms of adding brand new stuff to a class is exactly what I wanted to see from, from the very beginning. So that's very cool. Before we do the Daredevil stuff though, there was something else. This something else was IGN. Now, let me remind you all, before I even begin to talk about this, that IGN have had very little to do with Guild Wars 2 news recently, and when they have been involved, they've messed stuff up. You can't spell ignorant without IGN, as they say, but... There does seem to have been a bit of an error, a bit of a mistake from someone over there, um, where a tweet was released days early. Of course, we know that this coming Saturday, ArenaNet are going to be revealing their plans for challenging group content and a variety of other things about Guild Wars 2. Well, encapsulated in a single tweet coming from IGN, we seem to get almost the full story. They threw this up. It has an image of Zaitan. This could just be placeholder, or it could actually be hinting at a potential Zaitan fight revamp. That would be fantastic, and they specifically say, Guild Wars 2 is getting raids. That's pretty explicit. You know, uh, ArenaNet could be adding something that's basically raids, but they want to name it their own thing because they don't want to acknowledge that there are other MMOs that have something similar. But it seems like if uh, this tweet is to be believed, because IGN got the information early, they're probably under embargo and they're not supposed to release, obviously, until ArenaNet would give the details to everyone else. It seems very likely that full-blown raids are coming to this game. I think ArenaNet's perspective, even if they borrow that term, could mean still lower amounts of players, could mean as little as 8-man content or even 5-man I'd be happy with, but probably we're looking at somewhere between 10 to 15-man content. Raids are almost guaranteed to be a thing, and we'll find this out on Saturday. But even more interestingly, more interestingly than this confirmation it seemed that we're getting raids, even more interestingly that maybe one of these raids could be related to the Zaitan fight, we actually have here, too, word that Guild Wars 2's core game is going to be free. This is the really huge thing. Now, we know that botting has been on the devs' mind. We know they've already tackled a wave of botters and gold sellers and things at the game's initial release. And so now, they could indeed be having plans to free up a lot of stuff. It would explain their weirdness, their pricing models, the structures that they've gone with recently, and I think would in general be a pretty healthy thing for the game if we're looking at something akin to a trial account. I can absolutely see, it would, like one thing Guild Wars 2 doesn't have, for example, is a refer a friend system. Why don't they have those systems in place? Maybe it is because for Heart of Thorns and going forward, they want people to be able to try base Guild Wars 2 for free. You have a free account that has a variety of things locked off. Maybe certain formats like these raids and like Fractals of the Mist, the new revamped ones, maybe Dungeons, uh, Heart of Thorns specific content, maybe certain things are locked off, but what they're going to call the core game and what they distinguish that as is probably going to be a lot of what they talk to us about on Saturday will be free for people. And this doesn't just mean content as well. I'm looking at this in terms of free accounts cannot use chat. They can only speak to, you know, people who have friend listed them and friend listed them back perhaps or only be able to use guild chat. They won't be able to send mails. They'll have these kinds of restrictions in place. A, to incentivize people to buy full real accounts, but also to combat things like gold sellers who won't be able to use these, you know, many, many accounts to spam you with advertisements for this stuff. So it seems really exciting and specifically, don't just think of PvE, think of PvP. I have always been of the belief that Guild Wars 2 PvP will do far, far better if, like many of the other incredible PvP games out there that have huge followings, ended up free to play. A free to play Heart of the Mists will be massive for the player base, for the population, for really getting their feet steady and building a scene. In combination with the new game type and with the leagues, with real infrastructure in place, 
I can now see truly if this if this ends up real why they may have been so excited and I'm feeling pretty good about the PvP side of things as well. But again, I think there will be restrictions if they do free accounts and I think that it's very important they do that. I think their philosophies for going buy to play rather than subscription based or entirely free to play have always been bang on a lot in line with my philosophies about the way you could run an MMO and I think they're going to stick to that. This should uh, explain things really well. So so yeah, uh, very exciting stuff. Let's move on to the Daredevil. Um, this was news that they actually wanted us to have. I should mention as well, you know, it's a damn shame that uh, IGN totally mess up the reveal. But uh, I actually would argue this hasn't messed up the reveal. It's just got us a lot more excited and a lot more interested in whether it's actually right or not. And looking forward to Saturday. But so uh, let's talk about the Daredevil. This is the Thieves Elite Specialization. They went into some fair detail here, actually, about an awful lot of the traits. I'm not going to go one for one over everything here because at the end of the day, tomorrow, we're going to look actually at it in game and we'll talk about all the traits specifically there. But they revealed some really interesting stuff here. I've been talking a lot lately about how much better PvE could be if they design enemies and encounters that encourage us to use mechanics we currently don't use like anti-stealth stuff and like the ability to be unblockable and the ability to corrupt and transfer boons and stuff like this uh if they begin to use a lot more of that in pve we're going to see a lot more interesting pve gameplay and actually one big thing that they could totally use and they experimented with in living world season one is the idea of having down states on enemies in pve one thing, obviously, that trivializes a lot of content and a lot of risk in Guild Wars 2 at the moment is how readily and how easily you can rally. If something goes wrong, you just keep DPS and because you kill that foe and then you're going to rally quickly. Well, things could be quite different if all enemies are going into down states and they're actually having to be dunked before you can rally someone, which, you know, may take too long and eventually they're going to get defeated. That will change things significantly. So I do think in Heart of Thorns, they will experiment more with us having to finish enemies. And when you look at the Daredevil, you'll see the introduction of a brand new thing. And this is the concept of having a finisher attached to a player skill. So you'll be able to stomp someone by using the Daredevil's elite physical. And yeah, that's right. For all the speculation about clones or rage or whatever else that I did, physicals ended up being the uh, move of choice for the devs. We did hear at the end of the day that physical skills were abilities that interacted with endurance. And the Daredevil Elite Specialization is basically acrobatics thieves on crack. In fact, when Thieves transitioned into the specialization system, they actually found a lot of their acrobatic stuff sincerely hurt and acrobatics had a lot less incentive to run well now paired with the daredevil elite specialization you can really see there are a ton of synergies here it's basically dodge 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 we're gonna make your dodges amazing right so let's talk about it first of all as a core change you will still have initiative you will still have stealing these are still standard things though you'll be able to steal endurance as well now that will be something you can augment which sounds really cool but instead of having two dodge bars as you're used to you're gonna get a third dodge bar how awesome is that? Now, this actually holds some special meaning to me, this idea of getting a third dodge bar that's reflected there on your eye and you can triple dodge. Because this was when I was very new to Guild Wars 2. One of the earliest characters I ever made was I made a Mesmer, decided I didn't like it much in PvE, made my Elementalist. And after a while playing my Elementalist, I did make a Thief. And the Thief was the next main one I really got into. And I remember, as I first started playing this Thief, a friend of mine had told me that Thieves were really good because they could dodge three times in a row. And I remember specifically when I made that thief and when I got to like level 30 and I realized I had everything and I generally knew how it all worked I remember being very disappointed that I didn't actually get three dodges in a row There wasn't like a third chunk to my endurance bar I thought that would have been a really cool flavorful thing for them to have added to that class And I remember being disappointed that that wasn't in place And in truth what they were talking about was the fact that you could dodge roll and regain some of your endurance after a dodge roll So it was almost like you could dodge three times in a row just through the regen Well this straight up has added that user interface thing there that element of that profession that I was always looking for early on in Guild Wars 2 and that satisfies me greatly to know that this was possible in the engine and they've designed stuff that allows them to now put that in there so this is kind of your main thing but uh, it's further augmented the dodge through your grandmasters so if you are picking daredevil of course you're going to have one of the three grandmasters and they've done something really cool here where each of the three grandmasters changes your dodge roll from a simple evade into something that evades and does something more it changes the animation completely so instead of having just evade or dodge you're instead gonna be able to impaling lotus bound or dash 
depending on the Grandmaster you choose. There are also a lot of references to Guild Wars 1 Assassin stuff here, which I'll mention as we go through. So Impaling Lotus, first of all, if you choose this Grandmaster, it changes your dodge roll into something that will well finish. So if you're in any kind of combo field, you'll get extra projectiles coming out every time you dodge roll. And it will also throw out additional daggers that will cause bleed, torment, and cripple. So I'm guessing every dodge roll is going to be three daggers, and each one is associated with a different condition. I think when the devs were first making the thief, they were really excited about Death Blossom. Death Blossom was a, a fantastic ability for the Assassins in the first game. And nobody really takes Death Blossom super seriously in Guild Wars 2. It's something that can stack a lot of bleeds and it's a highly evasive ability. But I think this Lotus Dodge, this Impaling Lotus, is kind of another look for them to tap into what that skill was always supposed to be. And of course, you can do both now. You can go Dagger Dagger and take Lotus Training as a Daredevil and get constant evades that are permanently throwing out tons of conditions spending an initiative for a ton of evades and then just spending a ton of endurance for evades all the while forever throwing out daggers that are causing condies so that's your first option your second one is to take bound this is bounding dagger now what this means is whenever you dodge roll you instead will leap and this sounds like it would make you move further, but I'm guessing it doesn't. I'll explain why in a second. But it will turn every dodge roll you do into a leap finisher. And when you land, you do crushing damage. So this is, again, a way of making your dodge roll something offensive. But it's flat damage instead of condition, which we saw in the previous one. Now, that leap finisher is no joke, guys. Especially on the thief that has a lot of access to smoke fields. Turns out leap finishers through smoke fields are really strong. And this can help you stack a ton of stealth without having to... You know, use your dagger main hand anymore for frequent heart seekers or to waste all of your initiative. You can instead choose to spend your endurance rather than your initiative. Uh, this also would give you a ton of sustain for what it's worth with a water field. Now, you don't get great access to those, but in PvE, at least every time you steal from a ranger, you're going to get one. And those frequent dodge rolls, of which you can do three in a row at least, and then if you take acrobatics as well, and you're just regening a crap ton of it up, that's a whole bunch of heals for yourself too. So that's Bounding Dagger, got some really interesting applications. And the last one is my favorite, Dash, uh, Unhindered Combatant. Now, this is my favorite only because of Guild Wars 1 Nostalgia. Let me explain. In the first game, it was a very basic skill for the assassin called Dash that was basically like the Guild Wars 1 equivalent of super speed. It would move you incredibly fast for a very short period of time on a really short cooldown. So as you were running around the world, you just pop Dash and you'd go forward this little spurt of distance and then you'd go back to more standard combat speed. Dash was a great skill. It was one of my favorite assassin skills. Well now every time you dodge roll, you're gonna get Dash. It's not quite the same as super speed, don't get me wrong, we don't know until we see the live stream. But their description here is that it means whenever you dodge roll, you're going to cleanse, cripple and chill. So those kind of uh, movement impeding uh, CC conditions. And this doesn't sound like it has an internal cooldown either, so you can just constantly have those cleanse of yourself. And in addition to doing your standard dodge roll animation, you'll actually move a lot further. So because they say here that you will move a lot further when you dodge roll, it makes me kind of think that the bounding dagger one, the bound, the leap, that one probably won't make you move too much further. So yeah, if dash makes it feel like the Guild Wars 1 dash where you're just gonna dodge around, you go like vroom forward and ah. Uh, and think about as this as well. Think about the combos of this with say, dodge jumping, all right? Uh, this is gonna be really interesting for a lot of platforming elements. And I don't just mean out in PVE where you're wandering around and you're doing cool little trick jumps, but I mean in PVP, I mean actively being able to kite people and make certain jumps easy because you're dodge jumping while being an unhindered combatant and you have access to dash because you're a daredevil. That's some fantastic design right there, and I'm looking forward to seeing what people do with it. So, uh, what about the staff? Now, we yes, it is staff. This was not a very long rifle we saw in the teaser at the start of the week. It is staff. Uh, a little bit of a description about what the Daredevil is supposed to be. They say it's an up-close fighter that can engage multiple enemies at a time with sustained area of effect damage while retaining high lethality towards single enemies. That description pretty much describes Sword. All right, it, it really does. So I think Staff will compete with Sword in a lot of ways. Staff is applying weakness. Sword applies weakness on the auto attack. Uh, both of them have got built-in evade frames. Uh, Sword is fairly sustaining too because you're going to be stealing boons from other people. However, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I do appreciate there's a possibility of having Sword Dagger on one set, for example, and then Staff on your other set. But let's be honest, how many people are ever really going to give up shortbow? I somehow feel like that's bad design on the Thief, that everyone uses shortbow. But I don't know, maybe I'd be more frustrated about it if it was actually a Thief main. But so it's got a variety of attacks. Mostly uh, we hear about the ability to launch yourself backwards. We hear about the ability to apply weakness. And also something called Vault. 
Vault excites me. I really like the idea of this animation, and I'm, I can't wait to see it on the stream where we're probably going to place our pole in the ground, fly forward, and maybe get a real big leap somewhere, and they say you even get big damage when you land. That's going to be really, really cool to see. Moving on to the physicals, and aside from the, all the stuff that augments dodge, this is where the class really, really shines for me, and I'm very excited about a couple of things. So, Number one, the heal is a channeled heal that will continue pulsing heals on you for a period of time while also regenerating your endurance. And should you have max endurance while using this heal, it will instead heal you for more. So you don't get like that wasted benefit. So it's got some nice play A as an ability to get endurance back because that's so important as a daredevil. Or B, being able to just heal a lot because you manage to uh, keep high endurance anyway. I'm thinking of it very much as being like Ether Renewal for Elementalist, except for uh, where they Condi Cleanse, you get endurance back. I actually think Ether Renewal sounds, still sounds a lot more powerful. But yeah, that's your physical uh, heal. Then we get uh, Description of Fist Flurry. So you know how auto attacks guys tend to chain? We don't often see that being done to a great degree for utility skills. Well that's exactly the way that the Daredevil is using across two of their abilities, their physicals. So we got Fist Flurry and they say if you hit with all of these strikes it's gonna uh, pulse out a bunch of uh, little hits and if you manage to hit with all of them and only if you hit with all of them then it will rotate into a chain and you get to use something else. That something else is called Palm Strike. This is a massive damage strike that cannot critically hit. This again is a reference to GW1 where Palm Strike was a very commonly used skill for assassins. We'd have to dive a little into the mechanics of assassins to explain this thoroughly, but it back then again was a high damage hit that like couldn't be ignored because it was a touch skill. So I guess they're really trying to key into what that felt like before, but this is a huge strike of damage if you land Guild Wars 2's Palm Strike, and then it also will do a delayed strike of damage shortly after as well. So that again, as a fan of Palm Strike from GW1, sounds awesome to use. Moving on, we've got Bandit's Defense. This is basically just a riposte that will knock down instead of perhaps something more minor that we see on other classes that riposte with their weapon skills. I have no idea what the cooldown will be to make this feel really uh, useful for people, but that's it, Bandit's Defense. I feel like there's always usually one or two uh, of the utility skills that feels kind of lackluster. Impairing Daggers. This will throw out three daggers. One of them poisons, one of them slows, and one immobilizes. Or oh, that's how they make it sound. Uh, poison, of course, Thief already has a lot of access to, so maybe we're not too excited about that. But the slow and then the Amob, a bit of slow on the Daredevil class. And Amob has always been incredibly strong. That will help you line up a lot more of your abilities. And actually, you'll notice this throwing knives idea, this ninjury idea, has ended up as a part of the Daredevil. And that rolls me lastly into distracting daggers for your utility skills, the Elite Minus. And this is the thing we saw data mined. You know, this thing everyone was like, oh, maybe they're going to get kits. And they'll get all these ninja themed kits. This was a part of the Daredevil. Seems kind of random. How, how can you call this a physical skill? Really? When you compare what physical skills are on the warrior? I think they just had a cool idea for a utility skill and they wanted to throw it in anyway, even though it had a bit of a weird tag. They're being very liberal with the weird tags. But I guess I don't mind too much because at the end of the day, it is a sweet ability. My only concern with this is that, again, it's now a cool concept that really should have been reserved for a proper ninja spec at some point in the future. But yeah, so we get a basically a kit with ammo, it sounds like to me. They haven't clarified how this works, but this is a physical skill. You equip the daggers and you can throw them. And when you throw these daggers at range, they interrupt. And the cool gimmick to this ability is if you actually score interrupts with them, then it reduces their cooldown. So if you're bang on point, Twitch gameplay, incredibly good at baiting out abilities and interrupting, interrupting, interrupting from range, uh, I, I guess these have got very high velocity on them as projectiles for what it's worth, then you can re-equip your distracting daggers very fast and do it again. And once again, this is a reference back to the assassin in GW1. There's just so many of them here. Really, really enjoyable. Maybe you can argue the distinction between the, this as a physical and like a kit is you're not gonna permanently be able to have this. You're not gonna be able to rotate into it whenever you like. It's going to have a cooldown. Sounds like it may even have like an ammo kind of system on it. So, uh, so yeah, we'll see how it looks on the live stream. I think it's pretty interesting though. Not as interesting as the Elite, however. This is definitely, uh, it took the Daredevil for me from like a 7 out of 10 to a 9 out of 10. 
And that's because of the implications this could have on the future of Guild Wars 2's PvE. This is where we see the finisher. Once again, to talk about this auto attack idea, this is an elite that has a cooldown. So auto attacks don't have cooldowns. That's obviously very important. But a lot of auto attacks on like martial weapons, they will chain from the first skill to the second skill to the third skill. We're getting that on an elite. We've never seen that before already. We've seen some, some that like flip into other abilities. So like usually if there's a summon, then it will flip into an alternate thing. But this is genuinely, if you strike with the first ability, you get the second one. If you strike with the second one, you get the third one. If you miss, then it's going to throw your combo off. So to get to the third ability, because it's associated with Elite, presumably a high cooldown, this is a melee ability as we know, it's going to be subject to blinds, blocks, invulns, all that stuff. It's going to be hard to get to the, the last hit. But they've described it as impact strike, uppercuts, and then finishing blow. And so the first two are going to do some damage, presumably high damage. The third one, if you hit a finishing blow as just your Elite skill on a downstate body, it just stomps them straight away. No need to stop and press F and give yourself quickness or whatever and then slowly execute them. This is a way to kill someone in a regular combat environment. This is something I think Guild Wars 2 has sorely missed and is very satisfying to experience. And I can say that because there have been bugs in Guild Wars 2 before now that allow you to, through bizarre circumstances, just straight up kill someone and have them bypass the downstate. A really famous one I'm familiar of being on the receiving end of for the Elementalist is if I'm an Elementalist and I go downstate and uh, I get to like that last tiny sliver of health, all right? And then I vapor form at the last moment and an ally rallies me then that's cool and I'll stand up at the end of the vapor form and I'll be fine. But next time I go downstate, the bug would mean that I'd go back to that tiny sliver of downstate health again. It wouldn't properly reset it. And then in a quarter of a second, I'd die. And so when you'd experience this on very rare occasions in PvP, you'd have these awesome moments where you're beating the poop out of a uh, an opposing elementalist. Maybe you're on a really high, glassy build. You blow them up and then it feels so good to just have them instantly die. Similar situation occurs when, say, you kill someone in mid-air and they take a lick of full damage and then that instantly kills them as well. These are fun moments and dead devils will be able to do that as an actual part of the game's mechanics. You're, it's going to be difficult and circumstantial, and I would hope that the devs tailor it properly. But if you land that first elite strike, you land the second, and the second one is the thing that kills them, to immediately roll you into the finishing blow that finishes someone all in this sweet combo, maybe while you have quickness on you. Oh, that's going to be brilliant. And so there's a precedent set here too, that this could appear on more elite specializations and be littered further throughout Guild Wars 2's combat as time goes on. And this can be another tool for the devs in their little toolbox to invent incentivize various builds and playstyles that currently don't see any usage because those characters don't have access to blinds or stability or enough way to finish off their targets once they've got them down. So they can, lit they can litter these through the new elite specializations, maybe even update some core stuff as time goes on to make the PvP environment a lot richer. And this can happen for PvE too, that's the last thing I want to mention for this video. Again, to bring it back to what I originally said, they can slowly now, once we have a few classes with this kind of finishing blow mechanic built into some of their skills, they can start to add mobs that also have downstates, and you're going to want to use different skills and different elites because you need to get those quick finishes on a ton of trash that floods in, say, in a specific boss encounter. And you want to have those daredevils there using this specific elite just so that you can keep up with the pace of these mobs constantly coming in. Because perhaps the fact that they have downstates now means traditional cleave just isn't quite going to cut it. As an example, of course, an overblown example and one that would be hard for the devs to realize right now, but you get my point. The more tools the devs have, the better. This was something I was super happy to hear about. And, uh, and yeah, that's basically the Daredevil, guys. There was some information about traits. Uh, there's one that you do more damage after you've dodge rolled. Uh, there's the ability to inflict weakness on critical hits, which is insanely powerful. There's endurance giving you initiative. There is Condi Cleanse on Evade. But I want to go into the true nitty gritty details uh, this time tomorrow when we have the live stream. So let me know what you think about uh, the news today, guys. Both Daredevil side and this uh, gaff from IGN where they tweeted a little bit early. Uh, is it wetting your whistle? Are you scared about the idea as well of Guild Wars 2 as the core game being free to play? Or do you see that as a really positive thing? All right. Well, thanks very much for watching, guys. Have a great evening. I'll catch you next time.